Yo, well, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's Oscar, and we got some more information on those Sans uh, TRKs that uh, I made a video, or the last video I made about with the Sans 5s, 25s. Now, the thing I didn't include in that video was that there are actually hundreds that are a part of that find as well. So we have uh, fives, twenty-fives, and hundreds. And the extra included information is that there is a thousand chips total. So kind of interesting to find, like I said, a thousand, well, first of all, 120 of those fives in quantity and like 40 or 41 of the 25s, let alone telling that there's a whole thousand set of them. Now, with that information, uh, I went ahead and I gave James Campiglia a call. Um, I did call um, another collector, and then I also got an email from another collector. Phone call with James Campiglia, kind of, we kind of talked about TRK and kind of how, you know, chip rarities and stuff might be affected and values of such. But basically the thing is, uh, Campiglia thinks that the price will probably be affected just a little bit. Of course, the rarity value is going to be affected because at the time of, let's say, when he wrote the book, there was m many less known examples in the world. But now let's say you have 120 of them that come out or there might be even more considering that there's a whole thousand thousand set of them. Now the rarity value will go down because more examples are known. The value of the chip though, knowing that the, the collector that has the chips isn't gonna be selling them at all, um, not even singles, the, the set's gonna basically stay how it is. Um, the value of the set or the value of the chip, uh, individual chip might be affected a little bit, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna make it like a $40 chip. It'll probably still, let's say like the 25, I think I said it was like 1600 to two grand. That chip will probably still be worth somewhere about 1200 or a thousand dollars per piece because the quantity of them, they're going to be locked up. They're all going to be, um, together. Those collectors that have singles and let's say if they're willing to part with one, um, they'll still be able to get some money um, from those that might want to sell it So, uh, or might want to buy one. So there's one thing. Um, we did talk, I think he mentioned uh, in our phone call that he had been to TRK's shop before. Um, now the thing is, I can't exactly remember what, because uh, he said that obviously TR King had um, chips for sale there. I, I believe he said they were older Vegas casinos and other let's say casinos that made or got chips manufactured by TR King. The thing is those chips were for sale at the store because they were either, either overrun, uh, they were errors, um, let's say if the chip had some slight defect or or let's say uh, there was something wrong with it or something along those lines. Um, basically an overrun batch, few of those were on sale at the store. Now I can't exactly remember what price he mentioned but uh, he did mention that there were a couple of them. Um, I don't remember if he said Sands was on there or anything else, let's say prima donna or or any let's say any other nevada trk that comes to mind but um i had a very good call with james we uh we had a good talk and then uh i did also get a, an email from another collector um he mentioned in the 70s and 80s tr king sold off boxes of old casino chips to collectors i don't know what the criteria was for what was offered and what was held back then but these chips were new legit never delivered and sat on the shelf as back uh, as back inventory. Now he did comment on the thing that I said that the 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 sans chips that were found maybe they were reproduced in the 80s. Um, now he says as for remaking the chips 20 years later and having them be identical, that's probably not probable. Compositions change, materials change, regulations change, uh, resources and suppliers available in the 1960s wouldn't be in the same or wouldn't be the same in the 80s. The production manager at BERT or ASM told me that there are many colors done in the past that are unachievable today. That's that's basically as far as that went. But he wasn't too surprised that those Sands chips appeared, but kind of surprised that it took so long. So the other thing when I was on the phone with James, he told me to look at the chip guide order or the, the TR King order card for Sands and that specific batch of chips. Now, the thing that me and him were both really surprised once I looked it up, pulled up, I'll pull, I'll put it up on the screen as well. Now if I remember, I looked correctly, there was 30,000 of these uh, 1962 TRK, uh, the inlay chips that were, were found, there were 30,000 of them ordered. It says here, purchase ordered, uh, PO ordered 30,000 crown dash weighted inlaid, 
uh, chip four double spots, 20,000 of the fives, 7,500 of the 25s, and 2,500 of the hundreds. Now, you think, they basically ordered a whole batch new set for the whole casino. So 20,000 chips is way more than you probably need for a casino. I mean, sure, you can take in craps tables, uh, craps, blackjack. Um, they might have used them on the poker tables, but uh, roulette would have obviously had their own chips. But 20,000 chips is a lot and a lot of chips. Let's say if even the casino only used 9,000 of the fives, that still leaves 11,000 chips sitting in the back as inventory. And then as far as the 25s and hundreds, I have no idea how many of those they would have used, but obviously less than the fives because they ordered less. But uh, if, if, if you think of 11,000 chips sitting in inventory for, uh, let's say 20 or even there, I'd, I'd give it maybe 10, 15 years if, if, if the map max, because uh, as far as the hundreds go, as far as what chip guide shows, the hundreds uh, were basically switched out eight years later in the early 70s. So there wasn't, uh, after 62, it, it, it was eight years until the next set of hundreds were released. So in eight years, sure, chips would have gotten used, but the amount of chips that they had, it probably, I mean, there's probably worn examples of, let's say, the fives, but they had so many chips back then that there was no way they were going to use and wear down every single chip. So there's probably, like I said, maybe nine or 8,000 of them that didn't get used that are still minty and fresh and still had chalk on them. So from, from what I'm taking in, um, the chips that were found are the real deal. They're not, uh, let's say, reproductions like I thought they were. Um, but yeah, it, it just takes things and kind of puts it into a new realm if you want to look at things. Um, the other thing that uh, was interesting, the chips that were found, so uh, they're leaded chips back then. Um, the fives weighed around 10.9, 25s weighed around 11.2 grams, and the hundreds were 11.1 grams. Interesting thing about another collector who's a pretty big TRK collector himself, he has a hundred dollar chip that only weighs 9.75 grams. So uh, that's what, almost, almost a two gram difference, a 1.3 gram difference, but that's a pretty remarkable difference if you're thinking about chips that were produced at the same time. Sure, they were different production runs, let's say if there was, uh, chips ordered originally and then maybe a backup set of ordered, but 1.3 grams is quite the difference. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's just a little bit more information on those SANS, uh, the SANS TRKs. I can confirm that they're real. I mean, I'd, I'd like to... I'd like to say they're real after talking with three people yesterday, um, getting some more information, having more conversation, and especially looking at the chip order card. That was kind of the dead giveaway. If there's 20,000 of the fives, that gives some more information as to why the ones that were found were chalky. They were brand new, basically mint. Kind of gives an ex explanation on the 25s too. Um, I think I've only seen one or two of those in person. Both of them were basically brand new. They were in air tights, so... Um, I don't think there's too much wear on those. Same thing goes with the 100. I haven't seen that, that specific 100 before, but I've seen the white with the black tri-moons, and the one version of that I've seen in person was brand new. So, especially in the late 50s, early 60s, I don't think there were many people using $100 chips, um, especially if most people were going in the casinos back then playing with 25.50 centers or $1 chips. Um, Sands didn't really have low denomination uh, TRKs. The only low denomination TRK they had was a 25 center from the pan room in the 54. No uh, $1 TRKs as far as what's posted on chip guide. There might be an order card for those, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, yeah, just wanted to fill you guys in with more information on those uh, Sans TRKs that I made the last video about, kind of give more information, background story, give some information about what other collectors I talked to, especially Mr. Campiglia, who's probably one of the biggest known collectors. Of course, he's written his own book. Um, uh, he's written that book quite a few times, so he was the, the main person I basically wanted to talk to, kind of talk about it and kind of confirm stuff see what he thought about it and uh, kind of if we could kind of put two and two together. So that's exactly what we did along with the email I received and another phone call. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say they're the real deal and um, I think there's a few other people saying they're the real deal. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like. Uh, if you have any comments, put those down below. Share the video with friends and families and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.